Hello there. During his autumn budget statement, the Chancellor, Philip Hammond, said that £3 billion has been earmarked for a no-deal Brexit scenario. With news coming out that the EU and UK are aiming to come up with a Brexit deal in the next three weeks, the UK Chancellor of the Exchequer, Philip Hammond, still pledged an extra £3 billion for a no-deal Brexit contingency plan as part of his autumn budget statement. The negotiations on our future relationship with the European Union are in a critical phase, he said. We have already invested almost £700 million in Brexit preparations and today I am setting aside over the next two years another £3 billion. Personally, I'd forget the £36 billion we've already heard that the Cabinet wants to give to the EU and put that into the contingency plan and boosting our own economy instead of that of the EU. I bet we'd get better value for money that way, don't you think? The government is obviously convinced that the UK population will continue to increase at its current breakneck rate as the Chancellor also pledged £44 billion of capital funding, loans and guarantees over the next five years to support house building as well as an extra sum for training of the necessary workers. The aim is that 300,000 houses a year will be built by the mid-2020s. Planning law will also be amended to prevent developers sitting on land for commercial motives and the reasons behind the persistent gap between planning permission given and the houses actually built will be investigated and addressed, said the Chancellor. So watch out for even more housing developments springing up all around us. The Remainers had definitely better put their hands over their ears and shut their eyes for this next bit. The latest CBI monthly industrial trends survey has revealed that UK factory orders have surged on the back of the weaker pound. The trend survey reading for November was plus 17, which is a complete turnaround from the minus 2 seen in October, and is the highest reading for nearly three decades. Total orders were, by a small margin, the strongest since August 1988, while export order books were the joint highest in more than 20 years, said the CBI. The real point to note, though, is that economists had predicted a swing to the positive, but only to positive three. So they were wildly short. And just a thought, these are probably the same economists that are continually downgrading the post-Brexit UK economic forecasts. And on the matter of a cliff-edge scenario for the City of London... Barnabas Reynolds, who is a partner at Shearman and Sterling, writing in Brexit Central, says that any such danger is largely in the mind. As the spectre of an EU regulatory perimeter springing up and frustrating financial contracts between UK financial services businesses and EU customers ignores the existence of the public international law doctrine of acquired rights as well as rights of property under the European Convention on Human Rights and the EU's own Charter of Fundamental Rights. Thus, any contracts and embedded options are protected and they can be adjusted to take account of Brexit, he says. He goes on to explain how UK financial services could then continue to operate in the EU post-Brexit. Now is the time for careful, dispassionate and unhurried analysis of the industry's true position, he writes. Such a step is essential for an optimised outcome. The reality is that most current financial services business can, even on a hard Brexit, not only avoid any cliff edge, but, with a little innovation, can continue to be conducted with EU customers as it is now, without moving much if any, infrastructure or personnel to the ongoing EU. 
He does also say that it is wrong to assume that making concessions, such as a Brexit payment, will buy us a good deal. As he points out, if the EU wanted a good deal that benefited its citizens and businesses, then it would put that above playing politics. And on top of that, a Brexit payment is not due in law either. So once again, the EU, aided and abetted by our very own Remainers, are spreading doom and gloom where none exists. So I say, stoke the Brexit engines, and it's onwards, upwards and out. What do you think? Please leave a comment below. Thank you. Please do like and share this video. And also subscribe to my channel. And when subscribing, please do remember to press on the little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you'll get an alert every single time I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching.